Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. I don't know if you've been following along with Glass Cannon Unplugged, the creators of Frostpunk the board game recently, but they've been hinting at their brand new game. And I am here to 100% confirm it is going to be Dying Light the board game. If you're not familiar with the Dying Light franchise, let me just wax and wane for the next 10 minutes or so. I, I played through all of chapter one or, or scenario one, season one, whatever the nonsense is. Dying Light 2 has just came out. I need to get it in front of me. Granted, I've been watching the Rad Brad dive in and play through his campaign, so I already know a lot of the story beats and everything that's happening, and I don't have to uh, uh, rapidly escape from the uh, pursuing nightmare of death that comes out in the dark, but I am so absolutely thrilled to tell you that Dying Light is coming. Now, how do I know? I, I haven't been officially confirmed, but Glass Cannon Unplug published this video just a few days ago. So... Hey, hey, it's really late, but I decided I just need to make this announcement. So, our next board game project is going to be... Is anyone out there? I'm recording here. Sorry. Stay human. So this piqued my interest, right? I, I'm a big fan of the zombie genre. I, I really have historically uh, loved diving into zombie post-apocalyptic style IPs. It's one of my favorite subgenres in, in sort of literature, in movies, in TV shows, and of course in board games and video games. It's why I went so crazy for Dying Light when it first came out. It's why I'm so excited now. But that isn't quite enough proof. You see, I have been following their posts, just diving back in, and I was scrolling through today, and I noticed a brand new comment from, and a response, from Techland. Techland is, if you're not familiar, the publisher of, or the designer of Dying Light, and Glass Cannon here said, we're coming to visit. So if I swing over to Techland's page, creating unforgettable experiences, they are going to be the publisher of Dying Light 2. I got gotcha. you. I figured it out. Uh, they're not. They're not announcing it yet. Nothing's officially released. So I figured I'd make a video talking about the fact that that Dying Light, Dying Light, the board game is a hundred percent confirmed. There's no way it's not with them interacting like this. Uh, and on top of that, I wanted to have a conversation with you about what I want to see in this game because no one said anything yet, which means it could be anything my imagine com my imagination comes up with at the moment. Uh, so let me know. Are you a fan of Dying Light? If you're watching this, I assume you are, and let's start having a conversation in the comments down below about if we were making a Dying Light board game, what would we create? So first off, Glass Cannon Unplugged, for those of you that aren't familiar, came out with a game called Frostpunk. It was the uh, IP brought onto the tabletop setting. It is about to arrive. I'm super excited. I, I, I really hope that I can get a copy to the table here as soon as possible. I'm hoping I'm like first wave of shipment or something like that. But Frostpunk is was a fantastic adaptation of the tabletop experience. It was really cool to see this video game that I had played brought into it brought into life with euro style mechanics, worker placement, escalating failure, resource management with all the coal and harvesting that you needed to do, the workers that you were allocating and a really cool Here's the thing, really cool terrain map and building with a giant spire furnace in the center, heat that radiated out, and buildings that you're placing as you're upgrading. Uh, I've seen the prototype demos, I've, I've been watching the videos, I've been unboxing it, showcasing it all the way over in Poland, I think, which is super offensive. Again, why isn't here in the United States? And I'm really stoked. But here's, here's why Dying Light is so exciting to be partnering up with Glass Cannon. First off, Glass Cannon has a proven record in my book. Uh, I've been able to play, a lot of people are able to play on TTS, the game that they have on the way. Uh, we had a prototype in hand. We, uh, you know, no, do we have a prototype in hand? I think we just played on TTS. We played on TTS. A lot of the community was able to get access to it as well. There is a prototype floating around. Uh, it has been, I don't know, a year, year and a half since that Kickstarter launched, and I cannot wait for the game to come in. But on top of that, they also focus on thematics, on story, on narrative, 
and particularly on their like custom buildings, right? Because from one of the coolest things from uh, Frostpunk was the display that was built out. And Dying Light, for those of you that don't know, is all about elevation. Elevation. It's all about like parkour mechanics and movement and how you traverse the landscape. It's one of the things that redefined kind of the zombie genre, where instead of just walking down city streets, bashing people in the heads, or crawling through back buildings, firing your shotgun. In Dying Light, you're actually in this vast open world space and you're able to manipulate, maneuver, and move almost like, uh, what was it? There was the, the, the PlayStation game, the, the superpower one. Leave a comment down below if you remember where you had uh, blue and red powers. But you were able to manipulate and maneuver in such a freeing and uh, really fun way, in a really open world style way, and the parkour mechanics was sick. So I jotted down some quick notes on what I would like to see in a Frostpunk board game because it's coming, because it's not, not Frostpunk, in a Dying Light board game because it's it's coming, it is 100% on the way. So first off, movement is a key factor. So if I was going to be creating or, or working on bridging this IP over to the board game space, you'd have to do something that plays with the elevation, the different terrain levels that you have. I think I would probably choose to do a scenario-based uh, crawl, like a scenario-based dungeon crawl style game. There's a lot of exploration in the game. I might even have it uh, be... Uh, slightly campaign based because you do want to be able to go back and craft your resources, build out your base, get new skills, get new tech weapons. Uh, the interesting thing about Dying Light 2 is that they don't actually have, they have, they have guns, but they're not actually effectively guns. You have like rockets that you can fire that break after a few uses. You're mostly using modular physical weapons where in, in the original, I believe there were guns. I mean, it's been a while since I played, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, don't quote me on that. But I think there were certainly more powerful weapons. Uh, either way, so if I was creating this, I would I would start with sort of scenario-based things, crawl-based things, kind of similar to zombie side, if I was going to say, like as a base mechanic. But then I'd have to incorporate a lot more elevation when it comes to manipulating AI movement, jumping up on ledges, being able to feel like you can really uh, vault and perform and traverse the landscape in an interesting way. It's such a central part to the video game that a lot of cool freeform kind of movement rules would be essential. I also would want to uh, build in some degree of interesting and dynamic combat. Like, I want to be able to jump off a roof and smash someone in the head, or I want to be able to kind of throw weapons and, and manipulate gear. That'll be more classic dungeon crawl style. I don't know that I'd iterate, 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 iterate. I don't know that I'd iterate on uh, dungeon crawl mechanics too significantly there. I think the mix of uh, advantage and disadvantage, high and low, would be really cool. Uh, beyond that, I would want to have, like I already said, 3D, a 3D environment. I want a dungeon crawl uh, with uh, Dying Light that is no longer on this 2D platform or on a 2D platform where you visually see uh, like you're on a balcony, but you're not really on a balcony. I want a map that is expansive and has highs and lows and levels and areas that spawn when you jump up to them and places where you're like ducking through and exploring. I kind of want it like an RPG scene on the table in front of me. I think that would be uh, super cool, and I think it's doable. I think it's something you could do, especially working with such a massive IP that's built on that idea. I don't know. I want a narrative focus. Now, Dying Light, it could be two different versions. It could be either a core narrative story, like rebuilding your base or surviving the apocalypse or being one of the last survivors to try to hunt down the cure for an infection that's spreading throughout the village, but Dying Light is also composed of a series of modular uh, one-off missions that upgrade your skills, level you up, and kind of progress the story along in a more open world setting. I don't know that I need it to be a single large branching narrative. I think I would be okay with kind of a zombie side mini campaign scenario based thing, but I want it to focus on uh, story elements. Like I want the game to progress due to narrative progression throughout the course of play. So if I'm sitting down for a three part session, I want to make it to the generators and then having the board change or have new creatures spawn or have a boss pop out. I also want to see the day and night system incorporated in a really interesting way. Here's my thought right now, uh, and let me know yours down below because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, the day and night system in Dying Light is super interesting because during the day, things are dangerous, but they're not that dangerous. You can mostly handle everything that's coming out. The zombies are slower, slower moving. 
Uh, and you know, until you get like trapped in a corner, you can pretty much fight your way out, bash them in the head, and crawl through whatever you need to. But when it turns to night and you press your luck moving from one to the other, you're going to have the hunters that start coming out. I forget the actual term that they're called, but there's these giant abominations that pursue you through the city streets, but they're only there in the dark. Sort of uh, a la, uh, what, Will Smith uh, and, what is it? Uh, I'm completely blanking. Uh, I... Every time I try to remember that movie, I, I, I blank for like 10 seconds and then I remember it right when I didn't need to remember it anymore. But you're going to have these nighttime mechanics where the game switches from an open world exploration, resource gathering, settlement building style game to genuinely a horror a horror game. You pop into like a hospital, for instance, with dark corridors, and suddenly you're running through, doing your best to use your parkour abilities to maneuver, jump, leaping into blind darkness, trying to escape the hunting, pursuing beast. And uh, that is one of the coolest things about Dying Light. It's one of the it's one of the ways that the game switches the script on you. You go from this uh, sort of open world, safe but challenging uh, zombie game to something that is just straight out of a nightmare and there's nothing you can do to prevent it from catching you unless you're just good enough at running and it really incorporates the parkour elements into the gameplay mechanics in an interesting way so i want to see scenarios that are built around accomplishing a mission but also have a day and night timer like 12 rounds or something like that that press you closer and closer to everything escalating and if you end up crossing that line you could win before it, but if you end up crossing that line, the game should escalate into this nightmare mode where everything's evil, but also a giant abomination or spawn pops down onto the map and starts pursuing and hunting you, like racing through the streets, and you need to start using your, not powerful abilities, not weapons or mechanics, but you need to start using your parkour abilities to make it across the map to an exit or dodge out of the way or accomplish whatever you're trying to do just within the nick of time. There could be interesting things around movement and sound as well, but that is less compelling to me than just a really uh, interesting narrative escalation when it comes to like the horror of the game and just how terrifying those creatures are. I want the game to feel like as I'm approaching the eighth round and I'm running out of time, I want the game to feel like I'm going to die, but I also need to get this done. It should be one of those where if you win, it's right at the end of grasping victory. Uh, so... It really, I want the narrative focus. I don't need a giant campaign necessarily. I'd rather, I think I'd rather a set of uh, accessible one shots that can be strung together into a larger campaign. I wanted to focus on day and night systems on a lot of tactical exploration. Uh, honestly, my thought process is basically if they're able to give me a uh, twist on the mechanics of Zombicide with a narrative footprint or a narrative background framing everything and that combination of exploration, resource management, resource building, and of course the nightmare mode, uh, this is going to be something really, really fun. Uh, if they're doing a larger campaign, I'd love to see crafting incorporated in some way, like going out and gathering the resources you need to upgrade your weapons, your skill trees, kind of a la Kingdom Death, I suppose, or any, any other game that has monster hunting and, and settlement building. Um, yeah, I'd be interested too if they, uh, incorporate elements of like the frost punk uh, resource management into a system like this, right? As you go out and you gain those resources, you have to expend them in certain ways to accomplish tasks, upgrade your weapons, your, your marketplace, but also just, let's say they're building a settlement. Let's say it's like it's its, its own one-off story and you're trying to establish a safe haven in a fallen city. Uh, I'd love to see a twist on uh, kind of building out your personal base and figuring out how to survive in the po apocalypse uh, within this world and this environment. But either way, that's my thoughts from a just massive fan of Dying Light. I, I can't believe I get the opportunity to cover and showcase and start talking about some of like my favorite video game IPs in this place. Um, and I'm super, I'm super pumped that uh, I was able to catch on to this. Then again, I could be, I could be completely wrong. Techland could be screwing with us. Uh, Glass Cannon could be screwing with us. But there's no way there are. There's, there's absolutely no way they are. They should just go ahead and announce everything, because I've spoiled it all now. Now I just want to know what, what that, the heck this game is going to be, and when it is actually arriving. That's my thoughts. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to go download Dying Light 2 and start playing immediately. I just got my gaming PC up and running. I honestly could use a break. I've been up all night filming videos. If I seem a little uh, uh, distractible, it is a combination of caffeine, excitement, lack of sleep, and uh, strong desire 
to just go bury my head in a video game for about 10 hours. If only I had 10 hours to do that. I could call it research, right? Now I'm just preparing for what's coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games and subscribe to the channel down below because if Glass Cannon's putting this out, there's no way I'm not getting the chance to cover it. We'll see you next time. Thank you.